Hey everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals and today is the second in my series of video tutorials on ephemera making using a paper and cardboard. Part one of my series was specifically using file folders and this one I'm going to be focusing on corrugated cardboard. I love corrugated cardboard. I love the texture, the thickness, the depth that it creates in your journals and all your tags and ephemera. It just gives everything a 3D effect, which I love. So today I am going to be making a cover using some corrugated cardboard. And I'll show you that right here. This is from a uh, box that had some sheets in the middle and it was already uh, has the spine and so it looked to me just like a perfect journal cover. But if you don't have one that has the spine ready made in the folds, you could always fold a piece of cardboard over or just take two individual pieces and make your own spine. That's perfectly fine. So first off, gather some corrugated cardboard and let's get started. So on this particular cover, I'm going to go with a shabby chic theme, which I love and I know a lot of you guys do also. And what I'm thinking is, is if I make this cover neutral with all the beige and creams that later, depending on what I want to use inside of the journal, I could always add some color pops. For example, if I wanted to use it for Christmas, I could add some little reds and some greens or, you know, uh, for a wedding journal, you could add some pastels. That would be really pretty or just keep it all in the neutral theme. So what I like to do is I start with my cardboard and I like the way the inner part shows on some of it so I am going to just take along the side here and just kind of start peeling and what this does is it exposes the, the lines underneath and sometimes you can get it going and sometimes you can't so you know you gotta work with it here but once you get it going you can just kind of have at it and there's really no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just going for it. So let me get that going here. The reason I'm doing this is I do want some of it to show, even though we're going to cover this up, not the whole thing, but we're going to cover some of it up with uh, paper and fabric and things like that. Now, of course, I pick a box that's given me some trouble put together very well made, <laughs> let's just say. So I am going to have to grab a pair of scissors and show this cardboard box who's boss. So I got my little snippet scissors here. Just going to be tearing some off here just to get it going. Man, this is really well made. You know how some of them just come apart real easy? <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that before I started my video. Oh well, that's okay. Alright, I'm going to leave the inside as is because I think what I'll do is I will either line this with some scrapbook paper or uh, some other fabric. So let's just see if we can get this going. Yikes. Sorry about this guys, I didn't know this would be so difficult. This was a very well-made cardboard box, let's just say. There's probably some easier way to do this, but I don't know it, so please share if there is. <laughs> Alright, that's going to be good enough. I'm going to bore you guys all day with me taking a cart apart cardboard. So let me just move that stuff out of the way here. Jeez. Jeez Louise. 
Okay, so here we go. So what I like to do is I think from the bottom up because I like to layer the look of my journals and what I used to do when I first started uh, making journals and ephemera and all that kind of stuff is I put my focal piece on the on the cover or the tag or whatever first. So say for example I like this, I would put that down. And you know that's great, but what I found that I did incorrectly in my mind is it was just difficult for me to then add all of the layers and everything I wanted to around my focal piece. So while I still like to have a focal piece in mind, I don't add it until the end. So we're going to move that guy out of the way. Or another focal piece might be these two little guys. This is uh, vintage earrings that I think might go really well on the front. But like I said, these are the final, not the beginning. So let's think about this. I want to add, since I'm going with the shabby chic vintage theme, I pulled out a lot of my lace and fabric and this is some um, tea bags that I thought might go well with the theme and so I've got a lot of lace and fabric scraps. I'll move that out of the way and that leads me to the bottom layer again which is gonna be gold. See here's another piece of fabric scrap. This is an old pillowcase that I've used in my other journals. What I'm going to do is um, add some antique gold rub and buff. It's a metallic finish. It's wax and you can get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And what I like to do is just take a sponge and I put a little bit on the corner. Now be, be aware of this. This comes off very thick and once you get it on there, it doesn't come off really easily. So what I'm going to do is just create, you know, randomly some gold to create some texture on the lines of the paper. Now you're not going to see all this coming through, but I think it's just pretty to add a little bit of sparkle that you can see on the finished product. So I'm going to do that. And this dries really well, um, but like I said, wherever you put it, it kind of stays. I'm not really doing any sort of pattern or anything like that. As you can see, it just makes a really pretty sheen. So there's that, and I will close this up. And this stuff lasts forever. Let me close this up so it doesn't dry out and move that out of the way. Now the next layer that I'm going to do, I've already decided that I want this to be the front because it has more of the uh, texture of the corrugated cardboard. So what I'm going to do next is I'm thinking bottom layer up. So I want something that, let me, let me see how to say this. If you want to have lace on the top, like over that, if that's going to be your top layer, you want something underneath that'll show through. And then let's see, let me get another piece of lace here. I'm going to use this one. This is from a blouse that I cut up. That one's kind of thick. I want something you can see through to be my top layer. So this is a pretty good one. But let's just start with maybe a piece of scrapbook paper and I pulled this one out because it's uh, you know, along the neutral lines, the shabby chic look. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear off a piece and you can freeform tear it just like this. You know, just kind of wing it, go like that. 
before. I don't know if you guys have used these before. These are from um, We Are Memory Keepers. These are tear rulers. And when I got these, I was like, how the heck do you use those? These are really weird. But if you look, you keep the We Are facing up and there are ridges along the sides. Now this is going to be a jagged edge. This is going to be more of a softer edge along there. I seem to like this side for mine. And what you do, and I found out the key to this. The key to this is holding it down with one hand and make sure the ridges. So what I mean by that is on the back side it's flat on this side there's a little ridge kind of like at an angle that goes up that's the side you want facing up and you hold it real tight and you pull down towards the ruler in other words not straight down because if you pull it straight down a lot of times it doesn't catch on all these ridges and so there you go. See how well that comes out? Very cool. Now what? Let me see if I like that. I don't know if I like just the straight line there or if I want like an angled line. So let's do something else here. I'm going to see if I can use this tear ruler at an angle. Let's try that. I'm going to flip it upside down, but I still have the same, um, the same ridges facing up. So I want something that's not exactly, you know, straight up and down. So I'm just kind of moving this baby around like that. Aha! Ooh, now see, I'm liking that. Liking that. Except you got to make sure this one has text, even though you can't read it. Make sure it's coming up the right way. <laughs> All right, now hold on a second here. See the even side I want on the edge here. Oh, rats. Okay, so we'll have to use this one. There you go. I'm going to tear along this side now. Remember, coming towards the ruler at an angle and then look oh here's all these scraps we can use later yay 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 get those out of the way all right now I have what I want the words are facing the right way going up let me get some distress ink and distress the edges this is my little mini guy it's Distress ink in tea dye, and obviously you don't have to um, distress anything. I just like the way it shows up on the page. It kind of makes a border, and I like the way borders look around the edges. It just kind of makes the uh, pattern pop out off the page. Go around there. Alright, that looks really good. So I'm going to tear this along the top. So now see three freeform tearing leaves that little white edge there. Sorry if you can hear that noise, it's my husband outside. He's cleaning his car. I have the windows open because it's really nice here today. Oh, that looks really, really Good. Let me move up to the table. I seem to be scooting backwards. Okay, here we go. Now I am going to put this together by gluing it on with my Scotch Permanent Glue Stick. Just glue that. And this paper is from the Paper Studio at Hobby Lobby. Love that. 
I like to create um, journal covers that kind of have a theme, but can always be um, altered or adapted is a really good word, adapted to any other theme. So like this one, like I said, could work really well as a Christmas theme, a wedding theme, a Valentine's theme, summer theme, winter theme. Oh, that would be really pretty. Have you guys already started thinking about the stuff that you're going to do for the, the fall and winter? Yikes. Comes up quick. i got to get the bottom here. Since it was a little long, add that on there. Glue that down. Here, that looks really stinking pretty. Yay! Now, what do you think? On the back, should I do another piece? Yeah, why not? I like things coordinated. Why the heck not, right? So this is just one of those off-cut tears. And then what I'll use on all these other off-cuts is I'll put these on tags to go on the inside. And that works really well just to keep the uh, journal flowing. I don't know, I like it to you know, kind of make it so it's straight up. Oh yeah, is it the right way? Up, up, yep. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now remember, we're going from the ground up here, guys. Bottom up. So now let's see what lace we can add in my lovely pile of lace scraps. Yay! Love lace. Love it, love it. Ooh, wait. This was in one of my um, last journals. This is a blouse that I cut up. Sorry, I bonked the camera. I moved the camera over so it doesn't, you know, hit my elbow, but then the box hit it. So, jeez. All right, we're going to cut this baby up. Just going to use my fabric scissors and add a layer on there. So you can still see through there. I think that looks great. All right, now for this, I think I'm going to use, I'm not sure if I'm going to use my fabric tack. Yeah, I think I will. I have out my Mod Podge too, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. Now remember, with the fabric tack and sheer, uh, sheer fabric, don't do the glue globs. Have problems with the glue globs. So I'm just going to do a little dab and then spread it out. I'm just going to randomly put that over there. I don't really mind that it's you know folded over the back I kind of think that looks cool and mind you we're just winging it here that's the fun of doing this I'm so happy you guys are here with me today because of this quarantine thing I can't craft with my friends but I am crafting I'm crafting with you guys right right okay that looks really good. Now let's find some other texture here in my stash. Okay, I don't know. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe later. <laughs> oh, how about this? How about this? Can you see through that? Ah. ah, we'll just do that. All right, so I'm going to do a fabric tack on the bottom and then along the corner here. And I haven't decided, depending on um, the finished product here, uh, so far as the cover goes, whether I will 
Mod Podge the whole thing just to give it some durability. Now, do I want this folded over the side? Sure, why not? Why not? She says. Globs. Globs, globs, globs. I'm going to spread out the glue so it's not as globby. <clears throat> Excuse me. What? edge here just with a little bit not a lot you can always <clears throat> excuse me you can always come back later and you know fix the deals that stick up like this right here so many themes in my head for journals you guys oh you guys ever stay up at night and dream about or think about junk journals I do <laughs> and think about all the cool things that you can make I'm gonna cut this edge off here and then I look at all you fabulous people on junk journal junkies and on Pinterest and Etsy and oh my gosh just get overwhelmed it's so fun so much fun just kind of trying to even this up a little bit I don't care that it uh, sticks over the edge somewhat because it is shabby chic right right glue this down here it's another sticker upper all right okay, looking good here let's do another layer Oh, look at that guy. Hmm, this is really pretty. I don't remember where I got that. Let's see. Whoops. Oh, this is from a curtain. I wonder how that would look. Meh. Bleh. Don't like that. So what I like to do also is I like to find different textures and different uh, widths of material and things like that. So that, yeah, that's okay. How about this one? I don't know. That's, see, that's a different texture. So that's the reason I like that. And maybe that would go good right here on the side. I like the way that looks on the side. I think we might go with that on the side. So let me move that out of there. Oh, check this out, you guys. This cracks me up. This is a an ornament from a Christmas tree. Got this at um, Goodwill on the clear out, close out section after Christmas. And I thought, isn't that a cute ornament? But I thought I could really use this and cut it up. So what I did is it came in a pack of like four. Here's one that I cut up. So this was the top and I cut it up and look at that. That is an awesome piece to use in your journals. And these little doodads, these little flowers, I'm gonna cut one of them off and use it on this. Ha, love that. All right, so let's see. Let's think about this. This is kind of thick here, so I don't know if that would be better. That looks pretty good. It's kind of thick though. I'm I'm not I'm not really feeling this here, but I like the way it looks coming out of the side there. Hmm. <laughs> see what else I got in my stash here, people. This is a long piece of 
ribbon. Or actually, yeah. Trim, I guess, is more like it. I don't know. For some reason, I need something right here. All right. DEFCON 1, guys. Bringing out the big dogs here. I need something. Hold on. I'm looking for different different uh, textures here. So, ah, I don't know if you guys remember this. Clearance Hobby Lobby wedding trim. Hmm. Now granted, oops, geez, dang camera. Granted, even though this is uh, wedding trim, it can be Christmas. It can be whatever you want. Oh, now see, I like that because it's a different texture and I follow the lines. Let me move all this. I'm getting a little crowded here. Um, I like to follow the lines of what I've put down previously. It just uh, leads me into other things. So I think that looks really pretty. So we're going to put that down. Cut that off. Yeah, this was on clearance for like, you know, I don't know how much for the, the rest of the roll. Or I don't know if they call it a roll when it's like that on this on these little guys here. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna do that. Now, which side do I want? I like it just like that. Ooh, yay! Oh man, this is looking good. This looks really stinking good. Come on, getting crowded here, Pam. Let's add something to these to glue it down. Looking really good. So when I like something, I just put it on there and then it leads me into uh, what I'm going to do next. So for example, I like the way, you know, the scalloping along here goes. So I'm going to have to maybe get something else that has scalloping or use another um, piece of this, you know, maybe up on a corner to make it go together. Or hold on, let's see. Maybe along the inside. Let's see how that looks. Come on, what am I doing here? Going along the inside. Oh yeah, that looks really pretty. All right, well, sorry guy, we we'll use you another time. All right. So this is looking fabulous. Now, not done yet. We're still building from the ground up. So maybe we can make some little clusters, some fabric clusters here. So this is from, like I said, an old uh, pillowcase cover or pillow sham or whatever the heck you want to call it. So we're going to maybe glue a little guy right on there. I don't know. Oh wait, and then you know what else I wanted to use? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's use this. Come on, let me let me get organized here, folks. Oh yeah. Okay. Tea bag. And the way I do these, and I'm sure you guys have seen tutorials or other people that have done this, is I let the tea bag dry out totally. And then you can kind of get the little, um, there's a little staple up at the top and you just take that off and unfold it and wipe all of the tea out of it. And you can wipe it down with a, um, you know, a wet washcloth or a damp washcloth or dish towel or something. And it gets off all the extra tea bags, but uh, tea, tea itself, what am I trying to say? And then um, you're left with these wonderful stained little pieces of paper. Ooh, yay. Oh, that's looking good. Let's just go with it. So I just do the scrunch technique and scrunch it up. What's this? Oh, it's fabric from something else. Ah. All right. Are you guys... I'm a messy crafter. Messy. I'm going to do the scrunch technique and put that there. 
hold it down for a second. You can pretty much you can work with it and make it into any shape you want. This is looking cr really cool. I love it. And if you don't get your fingers all messed up, let me wipe my fingers off here. Uh, with the with the glue. Jeez. All right. Now from here we're adding another layer. Let's put this little guy on here. On my Fabri-Tac, I go through this like it's going out of style. Put that, do the scrunch technique again. And then I'm just going to stick that on there. I like the way um, it frays. It's got the little gold sparkles, if you can see on there. It looks really pretty. Hold it for just a minute. There it is. Stay down there now. Stay down there. All right, now from here, you can see how things go, or this is how my mind works. I see, like I said, I see the scallops here. I see the line along here of that other fabric. I see something needs to be right here. And then, of course, I see something needs to be stuck in underneath this uh, tea bag. So what do I have? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. I can make another. Oh, you know what we'll do? Okay. The mind is going here, folks. What I'm going to do now, I'm getting ahead of myself, see? Because check this beauty out. This was on the clearance at Hobby Lobby in their flower section. And I'm, I'm not sure whether this was like spring or Easter or something, but it didn't, you know, sell that much. So this was 75% off. Now it's a big old long um, piece for an arrangement. But if you cut off these little doodads, which I will do right now, hold on. With some wire cutters here, these little guys. And this, so this whole thing is like a dollar. Ooh, look, look at how pretty that is. <gasps> Oh yeah. Now I'm getting ahead of myself again. Like I said, that's a finishing touch, not an add-on now. So let me move that out of the way because I need to add some more layers. So let's see what we got. Oops. You guys do that? You don't put your lid back on your inks? Yeah. Something I need to get better at. Okay, from here, let's look at my pile. And I know what I'm going for, the signature tool. Yes, yes. I'll cut this up into some smaller bits. Now the thing with tool is it's very sheer. So what I found to make it show up is you gotta do the scrunch technique again. What the heck is that? The scrunch technique again, so I kind of glob this in the middle. Now the reason I'm doing a glob on a sheer piece of tulle is that it's going to go underneath the tea bag like that. So I just kind of stick it in there and then push down if it doesn't stay attached to your finger like that. And you can see it, but you don't see the glue. And then you can kind of fan it out or whatever you need, you know, however much you want to have stick out. All right, now that looks really good. All right, now while we're doing that, let's let this guy dry. I'm going to hold it for just a second. We're going to think about the back. Now, I don't usually adorn the back of my page, uh, back of my journals as much as the front. But it needs something, right? It needs a little something. Give the back some love here. So let's see what we got. Mm. Don't 
now what I use on the front. Okay, so we've got the paper, we've got this. I don't know if I want to use wedding trim. Let's find something though. Maybe some of my shirt. Blouse. Why do I call them shirts? They're blouses. Guys wear shirts. Well, women do, but these are blouses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of the lace off of this blouse. If I can get to the bottom of this. Come on. Jeez. I'm just going to go random. I'm going to follow this line of flowers up to the top. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Come up here. I like that, but I like that side better. And the reason I do is it's more, uh, it's not a straight line. I think I like that. I'm gonna cut off some of the side here. Just follow that same, get a little piece, smaller piece there. And of course you have to use this up later. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. All right, now that looks really good, except I want to go in and make this a little um, less straight, if that makes sense, so that it kind of... Uh, flows a little better. So I like uh, just to accent the shape of the flowers rather than have a straight line, but you can certainly do that. This is just, you know, my procedure. Okay, see, I like that. I like the way you can see um, the paper underneath. I'm going to Do some more fabric tack Do the little bit, the thin, non-glob fabric tack We're going to stick it on there. Well, let's see. I think I like the smaller end, or I should say the thinner side of the flowers at the top, so I switched it around. I'm just going to stick that down. I like that a lot. Do some corner, corner touch-ups here. I don't know if I'll leave this um, edge, you know, over the side like that. That definitely makes it uh, more shabby chic. So I might just do that, getting this edge down here also. All right. Get that out of there. <laughs> Although, even though I am a messy crafter, I, I make it a point to clean up my craft room at the end of the day. Because if not, it gets a little overwhelming. Okay, now we're looking good here, guys. Now this, I decided to do on the side, remember? Because there's another um, different pattern of lace, and it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of uh, 3D-ish. So I'm going to do that along there. Oh, wow. Okay, another tack down here. And when I use a piece of lace that has um, a lot of holes in it, what I'll do with the fabric tack is I'll 
kind of follow the lines where the holes aren't, if that makes sense, where the, the fabric is and not the holes, so you don't have to see it. So like along the side here, just follow it down. And I still like that you can see the cardboard underneath. That, that is cool. I have a huge supply of cardboard boxes and it's kind of getting out of control. So anytime we get a delivery, the husband says, hey, look at this box. Look at this. This is a great size for your journals. <laughs> And the reason he's doing that is because he doesn't want to, you know, break them down and deal with putting them in the trash. And although he will, don't get me wrong, but he's funny. He's like, hmm, maybe she'll keep this for her journals so that I don't have to break it down and put it in the trash. <laughs> I caught on to him. I know. Yeah, okay. But I do save a lot and I save a lot for, um, you know wrapping of gifts and things like that. Okay, so let's cut this guy off. Oh, wow. Looking fabulous. Look at that. Oh, sticker upper. Sticker upper. This is so cool, you guys. Man, love doing this stuff. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so now we're back to the front. And I don't know if I like that sticking up or not. Probably not because the other ones aren't. Let me glue that guy down. Looking pretty stinking awesome. Get some corner action going here. All right, now. What we're going to do, let me move this out of the way, is hopefully I have enough time. I can't see what my timer is, but it looks like things are going good. I want to make another little corrugated cardboard topper for the front. And then this little baby will be done. Now look at this. This is from a piece of cardboard that had white, um, you know, a white covering on that. Now that's more of a gray color. I don't know if that'll look good now that I have the golds. I thought it would, but I'm not, I'm not digging it. So let me get it just a regular color again. Let's see here. Yep. Right, so we're going to make a quick tag to go over the top. And like I said, we're still just layering up a storm, right? Now what, what do you guys think? The ridge is the same? as the cover or different, or I should say, you know, perpendicular. I think we're going with perpendicular because that's cool. All right, and I don't know if I'm gonna do the same wax or let's check this out. Get this out of here. They make silver too. Well, they probably make a lot of other colors, but those are the only two that I have. All right, so what I'm gonna do is do the same thing again with this. Get some of that rub and buff wax. Oh, and you know what? Think about this here, guys. I just thought of that. Let's put a little gold silver on that too. Oh yeah, look at that. That brings the whole thing together. Yippee! We'll do the back too. And like I said, once this stuff is on there, it does not come off. I've tried, like if I made a, if I had a, something I didn't end up liking. See, like that, I did a little bit too much. It's really kind of hard to get off, but it does come off a little bit. But just be ready for it to adhere really well. Okay. Yep. Now I don't know. Should I add gold to this one? Probably, because I'm kind of a matching person. Where's my gold? Is this gold? Yep. 
don't have to, but I do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a little bit of gold on this guy. Okay, that works good. Move that out of the way. All right, so we're going to have this as a focal point kind of next to this guy. But here I go again. I like this to match with that. So what do we do? We make another one of these little doodads, maybe to put on top. Or is that too much? I don't know. Let's think about this here for a second. Is that going to be too big? Mm-hmm. I don't think so because you know me I'll just keep adding until I like it okay here we go add some of this this is that same uh, pillow sham thingy do the scrunch technique again and this stuff it dries really quick even though I do have some on my hands it dries really quick. That's from before. Alright. Move that out of the way and we'll focus on this. Okay, so now let me get another wipe. Okay. Alright, we're going to use some of the same material that we did on the other side of this. Get that out of there. So I'm going to do some of that same shirt. Shirt? Why do I call it shirt? Blouse. 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 It's a little big. I'm going to have to cut that down again. And you probably can't even tell that this is the same lace, but at least I know it is. So it kind of, in my mind, makes it look like it all goes together. Okay, looking good. All right, now what else? What else? Do you think some more of this? Let's get a little bit of more of this uh, tea bag here. Scrunch technique again. Smush it up. Smush and stick. <laughs> Smush and stick. And you can always cut off edges that look wonky or weird or whatever. That's that's what I end up doing with a lot like that weird guy. What the heck is that? It's part of the, the blouse, not the shirt. Scissors are too big. Let me try this. Yep. All right. I'll stick down there. Okay. Alright, now what are we going to add, guys? Let's see how it's looking. Looking good. It's looking kind of matchy. But, never fear. Watch this. So this, this guy you can bend around. Oh, ho, ho. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It kind of breaks up that these two are right next to each other and just adds a little bit of... I don't know, dimension, a break between the two. Love it. Okay, so we're looking good here. I've got a couple more little doodads here. Hold on just a sec. I got some little pearls. Or those are buttons, excuse me. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh, check this out. little five yards of pearl strings okay now we're getting into the fun stuff the bling I love it see these little guys oh there's a little piece that I could add somewhere which I think I will 
always add this to the top, that, or maybe along the sides. Hmm. Oh man, this is so fun. Maybe if I have it just coming out the top and the bottom. I don't know, I'm just playing around here, you guys. All right, now I don't like that, but I do like it coming out of the bottom, so we're gonna cut a little bit off. Keep that there because I'm going with that. Put this on the bottom. Hold my little tag. See, I like that it kind of sticks out. I'm going to make one, one of them longer than the other. Glue that on there. Let's see. See how that is. And I like that it has little curlies, kind of curls, because it's been in the in the container for so long. Let's see. All right, now what we're gonna do here is I don't know if that's gonna stay, but it's gonna stay when I put it on top of this whole thing. Now my fabric tack is oozing, but that's good because I need a big glob now. So thank you, fabric tack, for oozing out of the top. Stick that on there. Twist these guys around to the way I want them. Now this one you'll have to hold down for a minute. If that guy's too long, I can always cut him off. Who knows? Wow. I apologize for the break in the video. I had to catch a phone call, but I am back and I wanted to continue on with our corrugated cardboard journal cover. And what I did while I was on my phone call is I glued this little cluster on top of my corrugated cardboard ephemera piece. And let me show you what that was from. This was from a an ornament that I got at Goodwill. It came in a pack of four and you know you hang it on your tree like this and it's, it's very cute. But what I decided to do is deconstruct it and take this part off and also this part off and on the back if you just cut the uh, sewing off the back you get a big long piece of fabric and then these little adornments. So that is what I put right here. And then along the bottom wall, while I was off camera is I glued a little piece of ribbon that has been scrunched and sewn together, uh, cream colored, and I just glued it on the top and also glued on this little bit of that uh, flower from the section clearance section of Hobby Lobby. So from here, I think this looks absolutely fabulous. It looks great on its own. And what I like about this is it's neutral still. And you can take this with any theme uh, and run with it. So what if you wanted to do a Christmas theme? Now granted, it is August, but so far as junk journals go, it's getting close to the holidays. So I went and I grabbed some of my stuff out of my stash and I thought, let's see how these look, just to give you guys some ideas. Look at this pretty little pin. Look how the red just makes the whole thing pop. I love that. Maybe adding some red tulle underneath would look pretty. Something like that. And then, you know what I like to do with my fake flowers? Is pluck off the petals here and 
and stick those around, you know, underneath, just get bringing the red throughout. I think that this just looks gorgeous, just gorgeous. And granted, I'm not gluing any of these things down now, but I'm just giving you guys some ideas. And then here is some uh, uh, fake leaves from my stash. Look how the greenery comes through. Look how pretty that is, you guys. Oh, I <gasps> love it. Okay, so, all right, that's for the holiday theme. What if you wanted to do a uh, wedding theme? You could add some pastel colors. That would look gorgeous along the side there, just keeping with whatever your theme is for your wedding or, you know, whatever, not your wedding, a wedding you're going to make this for. Or look at this cute little button with some pearls on it. Look how pretty that looks. Oh, the possibilities are endless, you guys. Look at this pretty flower. Ooh, like that too. Okay, so there's two themes. What if you wanted to continue on with the shabby chic theme? Hmm. Let's see. How about some burlap flowers? I did get these at Hobby Lobby. I really like burlap. I just think it looks... It's just such a rustic touch and it just looks so good. So maybe sticking this stem underneath somehow, you know, cutting it off. I don't know. I'm just playing around with this right now. So going with the shabby chic theme. That looks gorgeous right there. Let's see. What else do I have? Oh, think of this. Back to the holidays, you guys. I'm going to take a um, poinsettia here. Look at the silver, if you wanted to go with a silver theme. I like the way silver and gold go together. I used to be uh, one of those who said, oh, you could never match, <clears throat> excuse me, pair silver with gold, but I just think it looks great together. Now, so, mix and match. Look, it put some trim, sparkly trim underneath. Look how pretty that looks. So, that just makes me so happy. It's so pretty. And this is so versatile. I can't wait to see what I make with this one. So one thing that I did want to mention is I kind of veered off the ephemera train here today, didn't I? I set out this series to make um, it on ephemera and I got sidetracked in making a corrugated cardboard journal cover. But that's okay because you know what I mean? That it means that I am going to make some more corrugated cardboard ephemera. So I'm excited to do that for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to bring out your corrugated cardboard and have at it. So have a wonderful day, everyone. I loved crafting with you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.